Hey, I wanted to show you guys how to do some basic but very useful baking in Blender. So I have a, a high-res mesh that is has been textured in Substance Painter and that's how it looks without any lights, just ambient light. So it has a lot of detail in the normal map there's a spec map or a, a roughness map and uh, obviously a, a color diffuse map and then it has some subsurface scattering and stuff as well so what I would like to do is because this mesh is kind of high high res um, it's not that high res but it would be a little bit too high res for like you know super low poly mobile game character or something like that so what I would like to do is have all this information baked down onto the super low poly mesh. Uh, and there's, it's very easy to do that in Blender and it's very useful as well. Um, so let's get to it. So I'm gonna just put this mesh back uh, so that it's right on top of the other one. And I'm gonna, uh, it's already on the second layer. So this is not important which layer it's on, but it is important that it's kind of overlapping your other mesh. So what I would like to do now is because we're going to bake um, light and render information. So I would like to add a light. So I'm going to add a area light and I'm going to increase the size a bunch. And then I'm just going to maybe put it at the top like that. I'm just gonna do a quick render to see how that looks. So let's make it a bit extreme, 500. It's a little bit too light, so maybe we'll do 250. All right. And then I'll go to the side view and I'll just duplicate that light and I'll resize it to something like this. And I'll put this at, uh, let's say, 100. And I'll duplicate it again. And put it here. And also, maybe, maybe this one will put it uh, 75 or something like that. So now, if um, I render, we should have kind of an even lighting. That's not so bad. And... I also have a, an HDR map on, uh, so there is default like soft diffuse light. So I always advise you put it in HDR map and I suggest you go to HDR I Haven because all those maps are free and it's a really wonderful service and you can support the guy on uh, Patreon as well if you want. So there's lots of really great high quality HDR maps there. All right, so moving on, uh, what we'd like to do next is also add maybe a plane. And I'm just going to size it up a little bit and lower it so that we have some uh, ground bounce light happening. Uh, and I'm going to make the, make a new material, call it ground. And I'm just going to give it like a dark color like that so now if you render we also have some some bounce uh, but maybe it's a little bit too too reddish so, okay fine so you can obviously set up your lights however you want you know um, I'm just gonna do it like this so next what we want to do is you want to make sure that the, the low poly mesh you have also has UVs um, so this one definitely has UVs. This is an old map. You can ignore this. I'm just going to go here. And you see it has UVs. So next thing we want to do is select your low poly map and go into ed uh, edit mode. Select all the faces. And so you have, uh, so you can preview your UVs. And then you want to make a, a new uh, image. And the image size is going to dictate the size of the map you're going to bake. So I'm going to put this at 2048. And I'm going to call it uh, bare head 
bake uh, and I'm gonna call it uh, I'll just call it a one and uh, we don't need alpha uh, that's that's all good okay so remember this one all right so now I'm going, going to close this window I'm gonna drag this one up and go to my node editor and go to the object view and we don't see anything because there's no material so I'm just gonna make a new material for the low res and maybe let's rename it as well to bare head low there we go I'm just gonna rename this one as well I hate the fact that it doesn't automatically do that um, okay so let's make a new one and it can just be a diffuse PDSF uh, and we'll call it also bare head low mat something like that okay so now we can see we have our diffuse and what we want to do next is create a um, an, an image uh, node and so you can do this by just looking image texture and there you have it or what i like to do uh, is press shift um, oh sorry control and space and then if you have the node wrangler add-on enabled you get this menu so i, I recommend enabling the node wrangler add-on it's very useful and it's free and it comes with blender by default and then if you uh, click on add texture setup it automatically creates all these nodes for you very quickly um, can delete these don't need these now uh, but it is useful so anyway we want to um, disconnect this node and all you want to do is basically select the image that you created barehead bake 01 and the reason you want to do this is because you're basically um, telling blender which image it needs to bake onto so this is a little bit weird um, and it's confusing because it's very different from other kinds of baking uh, because you're creating the image first and then you have to have it like here floating in your um, your node view a material and it is, it is weird uh, it, but it is what it is right so this is how it works so you have to have this uh, over here and then what you want to do is um, you're going to select your high poly and this is the, the texture setup for the high poly um, it's just basically principal bdsf and a bunch of textures from substance painter and then you're going to select the low poly and make sure that the, the low poly is active uh, and actually what uh, what i want to do um, as well is i want to select these eyes also these eyeballs so I'm going to select the eyeballs first, then the, the high poly mesh, and then lastly the low poly mesh. Okay, so now if you go to the render view or the render tab, um, you want to close these, sampling, um, performance, and all the way down there's bake. So this is what we're going to use. But you might want to set up your uh, sampling um, by default I think it's like uh, 32 I think or 64 and I think I'm and it's the render one that's important so I'm gonna set it I'm gonna keep it at 128 and then uh, I'm gonna turn off the noising although I don't think this matters and I'm going to set the performance back to uh, 64 that's the default setting as well, I think so. And this is not so important, uh, but I'm doing it anyway. Okay, so then here you see, uh, this is the default setting combined, and you have all of these turned on by default as well. What's not turned on by default is selected to active, and that's exactly what you need to enable. So what this means is yeah, all the selected objects are gonna bake to the active object. Um, so we have to enable that and then we're gonna have to probably mess around with the distance But I'm gonna start off by setting it at point uh, Let's do point one um, And the dis ray distance is basically it's shooting a ray from the The normal I think uh, from the, the low, low poly mesh to 
in, inside and outside to see if it what what it hits and whatever it hits it bakes to that pixel or something like that uh, magic so I'm gonna drag this over here and open my UV image and I'm gonna open this one so we can preview our image once it's rendered and then all you have to do is press bake then depending on the resolution of your texture and the uh, the samples it's going to take you know that's gonna be what determines how long the bake is gonna take so I don't think this is gonna take too long but I guess I'll speed this up a little bit Okay, so it's finished baking. This took a little bit longer than I expected and I think it's because of the subsurface scattering. So if I go to just my low poly now and I go into texture mode, you can see the, the texture has been baked. Um, and you know, it looks a little bit uh, deformed in areas, but you gotta remember that this is um, like super low poly, right? So the more geometry you add that is close to the original, the, the better it's gonna look um, so I uh, might wanna like check this in a render as well but ideally you should check that in um, so I'm gonna add a an emission shader ideally you check it in a, a real-time render like Eevee or um, uh, marmo set or something like that there we go so this is now how it should look so you see we get all of these the specular detail and stuff like that um, baked down and all of the shadows and all that stuff so it looks pretty cool actually and of course uh, the specular highlights are going to be dependent or on where your light sources were when you baked. Um, all right, so so that is uh, the basics of baking some like uh, a rendered texture from one mesh to another mesh. And the interesting thing you can do here is of course you can adjust the, the light setup, but you could also um, set up different materials so if i add another uh, material i'm gonna add another material and i'm just gonna duplicate this one material two and then what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna disable the uh, the base color and i'm also gonna turn off the subsurface scattering um, put it to zero and if i render this now you see i just get the 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 gloss map and the um, the the normal map and if I turn this also down a little bit the base color now we have like a very nice ambient occlusion with a specific light setup so I'm gonna save this uh, image down here and I'm also going to rebake, but I'm going to set my bake. I'm going to make a new bake. Uh, so what is this called? Barehead. Barehead bake 02. And this one I'm going to put at 1024 so it will go a little bit faster. There we go. And now I'm going to go back to this mesh, the low poly mesh, and I'm going to uh, disconnect and select bake hit 2 and then I'm gonna do the same thing but before I do that I'm also gonna duplicate uh, the the eyes and I'm gonna the eye material and I'm also gonna set it just to to white uh, with, with no saturation a little bit grayer like that so again we select the the, the eyes the head and then finally the the low poly I just want to make sure that the low poly is the active and then we go back to bake and 
for this one we can also reduce the sampling a little bit so i'm going to put it to uh, 32 and that should bake a lot faster now So if I now go to the low poly and plug this one in, you see I, I now have a very nice uh, ambient occlusion and this is kind of a, a better ambient occlusion map than you would have uh, with, the, with just a regular baker uh, because you have your specific light setup. And I can then re-import this map into uh, my texturing program like Substance Painter and use that as the source uh, ambient occlusion map or use it for additional um, texture setup. So I think this is pretty cool and I use it all the time. I hope this video was useful uh, for you guys. Uh, see you guys later. Bye.